Italy's Italy's public debt has reached an estimated $2.6 trillion. Fears that Italy could default on its debt drove up yields on the country's 10 year bonds above 7%. Stock markets tanked today as the Dow closed down 389 points. So that's the same point at which other nations, uh, if we go back to the 7% of the bonds, when other nations like Ireland, Greece, and Portugal all had to ask for bailout funds. And an Italian default would be much more devastating than all three of those countries combined. It's the eighth largest economy in the world and the third largest bond market. Meanwhile, while stopping in China, IMF Director Christine Lagarde warned that if international actors don't get their act together, the world risks plunging into a downward spiral of financial instability. So, what are we supposed to make of this all? How much danger is the euro in right now? It's in great danger. The whole European Union is in great danger. Um, so, what do you think is going to happen, right? If, as I mentioned here, if you look at the fact that these 10 year bonds are above 7%, you look at what happened with Ireland, with Portugal, with Greece, does Italy have to ask for a bailout at this point or have to, uh, you know, risk default? Well, they can't be bailed out. I mean, as you were saying, they're the eighth largest economy, third largest bond market in the world. And so, you know, the other countries aren't large enough to be able to bail them out. So they're simply going to move it around the fraudulent balance sheets that are being organized to operate together by the IMF. The IMF is taking a bigger role in this Euro catastrophe now, which means that the IMF going forward will have a lot more power over these individual sovereigns. And that's the question you have to ask yourself. Are you willing to trade your sovereignty for IMF board of directors? Uh, are the Greek people willing to trade their sovereignty for a bunch of kleptocratic, corrupt bureaucrats who are following policies that are cooked up by charlatans? Are they willing to make that swap? If they are, then it's a great policy. But they're no longer Greek people. Call them IMFers. You know, when you go to Athens for a vacation, the people you see there are not Athenians. They are IMFers. And again, that's all these austerity measures are about. It's paying off the banks of the Belgium, the Dutch, the French, and the Germans that have made bad bets. Why are we molly coddling banks? Why are we uh, giving them one set of laws and everyone else has a separate set of laws? It's because the IMF and their banking friends have taken a, a position above the sovereignty of any of these countries. They're not elected officials, and yet they are uh, dictating you know, terms to these, these people in these countries. Yeah, That's tyrannical. Speak, speak. That's absurd. And, and uh, not only that, but it's going to collapse. It doesn't work. Well, how, how ironic that the cradle of democracy has been robbed by the bankers and the politicians and the bureaucrats. Are, these are not democracies. I've said this over and over again. For all those little children out there that think they're living in democracies, the merger of state and corporate powers, by definition, is called fascism. And that's all this is. It's fascism, pure and simple. Let's stop this facade of democracy. There's a total disconnect what's going on between the world leaders and what's going on out in the streets. The systems are collapsing. Well, there, it's a debt problem that they're going to cure by adding more debt. That one trillion euros, uh, the president of the EU, uh, Herman von Rompe, has already said that they can leverage it up to five trillion euros. That'll be in day one. Uh, and so they're trying to solve a debt problem with more debt. Now, the, this, is the, this is the issue. When you expand the debt load in this, in this manner by trillions of euros, you're increasing the complexity of the euro economy uh, by a, a factor greater than a mere $5 trillion additional debt. You're expanding the complexity by a, a really a much higher degree. You're guaranteeing economic collapse by, in, by in, in increasing the complexity of the system by adding more debt. This is why this should, should be stopped. In, in the next couple of months, you're, you're going to be able to say that we staved off catastrophe for two months. Because Italy is just too large to fail, and we think that uh, as long as they go through these austerity measures, et cetera, whatever it may be, they can get over the hump. I don't even think that they would be able to get over the hump. The reality is, is, is that austerity makes things worse if they continue in the same uh, path that, that they're on now. Uh, the economy is going to go down. The Euro Europe is already in a double dip recession right now. You know, uh, so then suddenly you see the deficits, the, the deficits even larger after austerity. 
uh, you know, it's just, it's a, it's a negative scenario. There aren't any good, good it's, scenarios. It's negative. You're, oh. you're guaranteeing global financial catastrophe by letting these charlatans pose these theories that adding debt to a debt problem is going to increase stability. That's insane. Why don't you just give your financial policies, oh, as a matter of fact, we already have. Ben Bernanke and Triche are financial terrorists. We know this for a fact. Let's just have the terrorists run the world's economy. They're doing a fantastic job. Give them more weapons of mass financial destruction. Give them more debt. It's absurd. Is nobody going to stand up to terrorism? I mean, Italy's this out? is this is uh, the Armageddon scenario. We're talking serious financial Armageddon. We're talking Great Depression type of stuff right here, right now. Well, it, what would happen is uh, Italy, if Italy went under, let's say that you know, then they would default. Uh, their creditors would uh, would be insolvent. The, all the Italian banks would be insolvent. A lot of the European banks would be insolvent. Then there would be a general bank run. Uh, the, the American banks, which have also had all these credit default swaps out on uh, sovereign debt in Europe, they would be insolvent as well. Well, do we know how much? Do we know uh, we exactly how much it is that our banks have at stake? What we do know is, is that they actually increased the amount of credit default swaps that they participated in in the first half of 2011. So, in, in fact, their exposure is larger than it was before. So they're definitely exposed uh, if someone like Italy it goes uh, goes bust. All these countries are pretty much in the same boat. Uh, France has 90 percent debt to GDP. Uh, Germany has 90 percent debt to GDP. If you had a recession, you know all of these countries would start missing the deficit target, which in Europe is three percent. Uh, Germany would miss the three percent hurdle. Their deficit would start to shoot up. They'd have to step in for their banks. It's an institutional problem. The whole thing would unravel, and all of these countries it would just go straight down the line. Belgium would be next. Austria would come after that. France would come after that. So, you know, it's really, it's, it's, it's uh, deadly. But over and over again, it's the same story, Liz. Far too few have much too much, and way too many have much too little. These are, this is class warfare. It's as old as history, and it's happening again. So that's what we're really looking at over here. So it's all connected. This is an off-with-their-heads moment particularly when you look at what's going on in the G20 with this grandiose gala as they're telling everybody else, pay more taxes, you're going to lose your pensions and benefits, we're going to raise your retirement age till after you die, and we're going to cut your services. So it's all connected. It's, it's class warfare, it's beginning, and it's really, we're looking at the first great war of the 21st century.